Your Holiness, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you to this Parliament. I would also like to welcome my colleague members of Parliament in front of, sorry, it's in front of you, mm -hmm. distinguished members of the company of Your Holiness, warm welcome, the special guests and the audience present here in this room, and of course also the people who are watching this meeting on the internet. We feel highly honored that after five years, you have again taken the time to visit the Netherlands and have a meeting with the members of the Committee of Foreign Affairs. We know, we experienced already, that you have a very busy schedule in the Netherlands and that you will be visiting a large number of countries during your stay in Europe. Your message of peace, human rights, your spiritual leadership and your person appeal to millions of people all over the world. Also in the Netherlands, there's a lively Buddhist community and many Buddhist and non-Buddhist look forward to your visit. And as you noticed, not only, as I already mentioned, the members of the Committee of Foreign Affairs here at the table, next to you, but also many other members of the House of Representatives sitting in front of you, size the opportunity to listen to your wisdom. As a start of the exchange of views with members, I would like to give Your Holiness the floor to speak to the members of the Parliament and to all the other listeners who are very interested in your message. Please. Thank you. <clears throat> It's on already. It's functioning already. It works. It works. Okay. No light. It's oh yes. Yeah. There is sound. Oh. Okay. <coughs> Respected uh, parliament members, and I think some staff member uh, and friends. Thank you. Great honor. having the talk with parliamentarians. I always uh, admire and respect the parliament member. You are, uh, I think, chosen by people with trust, with hope. Uh, so you truly represent people. So, and my, I myself, as a, from childhood, I have some attraction about democracy, democratic system. While I was young, not yet uh, take the uh, political responsibility uh, through my friends, including sweepers. They are very innocent, very honest, so they bring all sorts of say the gossips in the in the in the town. So a lot of sort of the stories of such, such minister, such, such sort of the leader, really as a bully or, <laughs> or exploit like that, and too much what called favoritism like that. Uh, so then, gradually, I took the responsibility. And then within, I think I took the responsibility, I think in 1950, 50, 51, 50, I think. Uh, so the, within a few years, I start reform committee. So start some change, reform, uh, but not very successful. This is because if we depend on ourselves, initiated some reform, that naturally more suitable to the local condition. The Chinese authority. Uh, they want to reform according to their own way. So if reform 
initiated by Tibetan that might be hindrance for their way of reform. So they are uh, 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 not so happy. So and it remained like that way. And then some crisis, 56 on, then some problems start. So after 59, when we reach India, then again, uh, I try uh, work for democratization. Then 2001, I, we already achieved elected political leadership. Then my position is a semi-retired position. Then 2011, now I entirely uh, retired from political leadership. So all this, I really uh, admire democratic system as the best system. The, I always believe world belongs to humanity. Seven billion human beings. Each country belongs to the people, uh, not spiritual leaders or kings or queens. Uh, some occasion in America, I express America belongs to uh, about 300 million of American people, not a Democratic Party or Republican Party. So here also, Netherlands belongs to Netherlands people, not necessarily these different parties. <laughs> so, solo, solo, you see, you serve uh, people sincerely, transparently, then people's trust remain. So then, uh, there is always possible you re-election. <laughs> so in any way, I really, admire democratic system. So, so I'm indeed very, very happy to come here. And then, uh, as a sort of introduction of myself, uh, now, seven, now 79 year old person, I always describe myself as a simple uh, Buddhist monk. Uh, so, so, as a human being, on a fundamental level, we are same human being. Uh, uh, so I am one of the seven billion human beings. On that level, we are social animal. So each of us have to think about the well-being of humanity. Humanity, happy, peaceful, individual human being get maximum benefit. If humanity passing through difficult sort of experiences, then we individual also, you see, uh, suffer. No way to escape because we are part of the humanity. So uh, humanity, in order to uh, gain a uh, peaceful life, a happy life, uh, now here, the point is uh, satisfaction, happy life, not only uh, the I, I mean, not only the materials of development or material value, but the internal value is the key factor. So how old is this building? How old? I think old, old fashioned. Hmm? But this it's light, I think very it's modern. Very <laughs> very I never it. saw. You like it? Ah, uh, this was. Uh, very, very, very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> it felt then difficult. <laughs> <laughs> really wonderful. So, so, there's no, so the ultimate factor for happy life, happy mind, is uh, the mental level, self-confidence, inner strength. These the thing reduce fear, reduce stress, anxiety. So 
less self-confidence, then uh, your mental state is something weak. Then too much worry. Uh, too mu then worry, frustration, develop anger, like that. So therefore, irrespective of whether uh, believer or non-believer, this inner value, which biologically we equipped, we all come from our mother. So we all have to experience mother's tremendous affection, including mother's milk. So we all equipped the seed of compassion there. So uh, we can uh, increase, or we can promote this basic human value. This is human affection, human compassion, on warm-heartedness. This is my number one commitment. Number two commitment, I am Buddhist. So all major tradition, in spite of different philosophical views, all have same potential to help humanity bring inner peace, use in different methods. But same goal, same more or less same effect. So, uh, and then, look, now 55 years I remain in India. I stay in India. So India, uh, all major world rich traditions live together. Uh, really, harmony there. This is not only modern India, but also uh, a thousand years, that kind of sort of religious harmony. Uh, and so, uh, it is possible to create genuine harmony among different traditions. So I totally committed, and I, I had a tremendous sort of encouragement from late uh, Pope John Paul II, Second. Second. Uh -oh. RCC meeting. Uh, wonderful. So. Uh, uh, many other religious sort of leaders uh, and genuine sort of practitioner. Now they, many of them, really showing interest, and not only interest, but commitment for promotion of religious harmony. So that's my number two because of the uh, commitment. And then th third, I'm Tibetan. So uh, uh, Tibetan really trust me. So therefore, uh, and also I personally, Tibetan uh, Buddhist tradition, uh, Buddhist culture, really immense help for my peace of mind. So therefore, uh, it is my sort of responsibility or my interest, my commitment for preservation of Tibetan culture, Tibetan Buddhist uh, tradition. This is not only for our own uh, interest, for our own people, but large number of Chinese Buddhist and Buddhist countries in Asia. So preservation of Tibetan uh, culture, Tibetan Buddhism is something uh, really worthwhile. And also, you see, currently, last, you see, uh, a few decades, you see a lot of danger degenerate or dip, that, diminishing, uh, diminishing because of tight control like that. So then, then environment, uh, Tibet environment issue is something very delicate, uh, very important. So these are sort of my commitment. So human brothers, sisters, so you also you see, have what's the, what's the ability to promote human value and to promote religious harmony. And then regarding Tibet, in this country, of course, free country, free world, and the European Union, really uh, many decades is really showing genuine concern.
and from time to time, they publicly sort of express their concern. And wonderful, the European Union is one of the source of our inspiration. The other side, the United States, Canada, these, these countries, and this side, the European Union, really wonderful. Now you are one important member of the European Union and the Netherlands. Uh, since the 1960s, this interest from public really showing, uh, I think, genuine concern about well-being of refugee community. Uh, late Mr. Brower or something. Brower somewhere. Like that. So I would like to thank to you. So now, some discussions. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Your Holiness, thank you very much for your introduction. Of course, now we look forward to give the floor to the members of the parliament. And I would actually, if you don't mind, colleagues, urge you to uh, be brief for just one minute asking your question so that all of us, all of you, could ask a question. And first of all, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Timbruke from the Labour Party, then to Mrs. Safas, excuse me, from the Liberal Party. I'm, I'm so impressed, Holiness, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Mr. Timbruke from the Liberal Party, then Mrs. Safas from the Labour Party, and then Mr. Van Bommel from the Socialist Party. Mr. Timbruke, please. Thank you, Mrs. Chair, and um, Your Holiness, it's an honour um, having you here. Um, I think it was about 24 years ago that I had the opportunity to visit Tibet. At the time, you were also in the Netherlands. And when I was in Lhasa, um, I so happened to be able to go to the Potala and see it. And let me first start by expressing my wish that one day you will return. Um, my question uh, to you um, uh, is on the uh, Chinese um, uh, opportunity um, or the Chinese uh, reforms that you also mentioned and whether it is um, uh, possible uh, that you see some dialogue uh, between yourself and, uh, and the Chinese authorities. Um, considering the uh, Tibetan Buddhist um, culture towards reconciliation and the Chinese culture uh, towards harmony and consensus, uh, do you think that these cultural features could be the ingredients of a, um, um, a new dialogue? And um, what are the opportunities and what, what is it that you're looking mm. forward to? We take the second question. Hmm? We take the second question from the from Mrs. Safas, and then please oh. the answer to take the time. I think for me, you would, you would easier. Like Each yeah, question of course, answer. Of course, of course. Yes, <laughs> answer. That, that's better. Your but, Holiness, but okay, if you, please. If you want. No, 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 no Holiness, okay. please. Then please. someone make a note. Right. Then, then I can do. If you would like to answer right away, of course, Your Holiness. Now, at this moment, I'm your disposal. <laughs> so, you have Only authority. <laughs> What Please. to do? Please answer. <laughs> She's the boss. She's the boss. Oh. Oh. Uh, relation between Tibet and China is now almost, I think, nearly 2,000 years old. Sometimes a very happy one, sometimes difficult. Uh, uh, so then, uh, uh, recent decades or uh, mid 20th century some sort of uh, difficult sort of situation developed. Uh, however, uh, in early 50s when I was in Peking, uh, met Chairman Mao Zedong several times. Uh, so we developed very sort of close relations, almost like father and son. At that time, we really, and then number of Tibetan communists, we all really feel uh, under the leadership of Chinese Communist Party, we can build, we can modernize Tibet, full of enthusiasm. Then around 1950, 657. Most of these Tibetan communists dismissed from their post, military as well as civilian. Then is the Chinese government is a policy becoming more leftist, unrealistic thinking. 
So that was the causes 1959 crisis. Then we become refugee. Then 1974, uh, uh, we, after sort of a lot of sort of uh, our effort, and also receive, uh, I said, a meaningful advice from Indian government, mm -hmm. or mainly but Nehru and some others. Then. In 1974, we decide. Now, sooner or later, we have to talk with Chinese government, uh, uh, not seeking separation, but meaningful autonomy, which constitution, Chinese constitution itself, give that right. Uh, then, uh, at that time, China, full swing. Where? Swing of culture, of culture revolution. Culture revolution. Yeah. Then, uh, 1979, the Ding Xiaoping indicated he want uh, talk with us. Yeah. And since then, till 1993, uh, we have direct contact with the Chinese government. But then, uh, mainly because the Chinese overall policy becoming more hardliner. Uh, uh, so including Tangem and Muscat happened, mm -hmm. took place. So the overall sort of policy become hardliner. So therefore, the 93 C's of direct contact. Again, 19, uh, no, 2002, we revived direct contact with the Chinese government. Then Jiang Zemin was the president. Mm -hmm. oh. Then a few years continuously. But you see, there are sort of, still there is a policy more hardliner. So then, uh, now last few, uh, now few years, now no longer so direct contact. No. However, uh, in these last several years, I developed very I said, a close sort of uh, contact with a number of Chinese. Many uh, I said, uh, intellectuals and many Buddhists uh, and many students and some retired officials, military as well as uh, a civilian. So then, I think one sort of example, I think last, now three years, I think, since I think three years, or three, four years, is a number of articles wrote by Chinese in Chinese language as far as we notice, about 1,000 articles wrote by Chinese, many of them within mainland China. All, uh, over 1,000 articles, all fully support about our middle of approach. Very critical, their own government policy. So this is very, very encouraging. So since we are not seeking independence, mm -hmm. and also we fully sort of committed non-violent way, so support from Chinese public year by year increasing. Uh, then now Chinese government level, uh, recent now the new leadership, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. It seems he more practical person his policy is he thinking or pursue more realistic way. And recently, you see his uh, expression in Paris, mm -hmm. Chinese culture, uh, uh, very much related with Buddhism. So Buddhists should sort of have important role in China, preservation of Chinese culture. I think it is something 
very surprising thing. A communist leader now saying something positive about Buddhism. Quite new, isn't it? Uh, one time, the Chairman Mao Zedong, he said, since my relation, Chairman Mao Zedong, he said, so, 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 close. Uh, close. Yeah. So one occasion, Chairman Mao Zedong, you see, hold my hand, like then, then told me, religion is poison. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, I a bit, little bit, I a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> So the same party, the same position, the, uh, the chairman of the Communist Party, now saying something different. Uh, I think there's, uh, I have sort of, sort of sufficient reasons to say uh, Communist Party have the ability to act according to new reality. I usually go say Mao's era, Deng Xiaoping era, Jiang Zemin era, uh, Wu Jintao era, now this is Xi Jinping era. <laughs> so now China, uh, over 400 million of uh, yes. Buddhist population. Now China become uh, the biggest Buddhist population of country, mm -hmm. like that. So therefore, uh, so therefore we'll see, you see things, uh, overall I think things go more uh, right way, right direction. And then uh, Xi Jinping totally uh, also committed sort of dealing with corruption. Yeah. I think boldly, courageously. Uh, so we'll see. Quite hopeful. And firstly, you see, public, public level really uh, year by year increasing support and number of Chinese Buddhists follow Tibetan Buddhism. So therefore, the public always remain there. The party or government, although the totalitarian sort of government, they, their life longer. In democratic country, sometimes uh, in short period, you see change, change, change. <laughs> However, still people more important. So therefore, uh, I'm optimistic. Very good. Hmm? We love optimism. And meantime, uh, the worldwide sort of what's the expression of concern is very, very essential. Keep uh, since we are not seeking independence. So you, you can tell Chinese, uh, Dalai Lama himself from his own mouth say, since 74, fully committed not seeking independence. So Chinese official still sort of, how should they, repeating, uh, splitist. So actually not like that. So uh, whenever you have opportunity, you should tell them the truth. That's important. And then sort of these sort of improvement, improvement is their own interest. After all, people from China, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Bless you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you go to the next question, then you have some time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Thank you, Your Holiness. I'll give the floor to Mrs. Safas, Labour Party. Thank you very much. I'm not a Liberal Party. Uh, the Labour Party. Uh, Your Holiness, it's uh, an honour and a pleasure to uh, to meet with you here today. I think for a lot of people here, you are a great example of uh, peaceful resistance um, and already for a very long, long time, so we admire that um, greatly. Um, let me ask you a question. It's, it's a political question. We can't help ourselves. We are pol politicians, so we ask political questions. You, you, you meeting with a number of politicians in, uh, in Europe uh, this week, not always on the level of the prime minister, uh, but still uh, with ministers, with parliamentarians like, uh, like ourselves. You already said a number of times that it is important that we keep expressing our concern about this situation in uh, Tibet. But what is your main uh, advice, your main request to us? Are we doing enough? And if not, what else can we do to help your case? 
Thank you. Thank you. I often used to telling the just uh, Norway, Norway. Also, I express one environment issue is essentially non-political, and Tibet environment is something very very important. Not only six million Tibetan people, but I think billion human beings, billion, because the billion, I think human. one billion human being, their life depend on those rivers which come from Tibet. From Pakistan up to China, major rivers come from, come from Tibet. So some Chinese ecologists describe Tibet plateau is third pole. So his sort of reason, effect to global warming from Tibetan plateau is as much as South Pole, North Pole. Therefore, he described Tibet plateau is uh, third pole. So this is something I think uh, the global warming effect now everywhere. So Tibet ecology is something uh, related there. So you also know what's the best thing, some group or parliamentary group, including some expert about ecology, with full cooperation with Chinese ecologists, go there and analyze or study the situation about uh, the damage ecology then uh, what we need, precautions. I think uh, suggestions on the basis of scientific research. I think even Chinese government also, I think, need that. So this is one thing. You can, you can practice. You can implement. Hmm? Well, then, uh, you are, from time to time, you are concerned about human rights violation, religious freedom, as you do. So. These are good. And then I think uh, China, 1.3 billion human population, uh, most populated nation, now economically, you see, gaining more power. So China can take uh, say the important constructive role on the global level. So for that reason, China need trust respect from the rest, rest of the world. So that uh, is something very important, long run, for their own interest, for their own sort of image. That I think you, as a good friend, you, you can express, not a negative way, for their own interest. I think in China, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you see, there are growing number among the intellectuals. Uh, you see, uh, even the, the pre previous uh, Prime Minister, Wen Jiabao, he mentioned China need political reform. And in some case, even he ex extended, he mentioned China need American style of democracy. So the Prime Minister, you see, expressed that. So that's the indication among the Chinese, a lot of sort of people who really uh, should do, want more change. So uh, from your sort of expression is uh, more moral support these Chinese people, including Nobel laureate Li Xiaopo. So like that, this I feel you can do, you can express. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. Uh, I give the floor to Mr. Van Bommel, Socialist Party. Mr. Van Bommel. Your Holiness, um, the number of self-immolations in Tibet has risen over the last few years. Um, young monks burning themselves. Uh, what is your idea about this? Is it, is it courage? Is it, is it anger? Is it protest? Is it despair? And what can we, what can you do to prevent this from happening? Despair, Mr. Despair. I, I think despair. I think despair. Despair. Oh. 
So, they actually, Tibetan loves our own culture, our own language, and particularly Tibetan loves this Buddhist tradition. So, when Chinese hardliner they stepping up criticism about religion, about Buddhism, and look down Tibetan culture and tight control. So these people really feel very, very sort of sad. Mm. So they choose short on their life. They no longer sort of bear that, that kind of, sort of situation. Uh, so then uh, this also is a political sensitive issue. So actually, when these the first these things happen, they blame on us from outside. Uh, in this, uh, instigated. In, in, uh, instigated. Uh, I can't. I cannot pronounce that properly. <laughs> <laughs> My tongue. Some word, English word, pronunciation difficult. <laughs> So similarly, if you try to speak Tibetan, I think some <laughs> yeah, you may also you find it difficult to. And of course, you see those Chi many Chinese you see, when they try to speak Tibetan, uh, their pronunciation is something very, very horrible. <laughs> so in any way, you see, they accuse us uh, all these created from outside, uh, like 2008 crisis happened. Even Prime Minister Wen Jiabo himself, you see, blame on us. Uh, so this is something very, very sensitive sort of thing. Uh, soon after, you see, the 2008 crisis and also this self-burning, uh, I express, please send some Chinese, Chinese officials to check, investigate. At Dharamsala in India, uh, whether we involved or not, but nothing happened. So, so this is very very sensitive. So whatever I say, they manipulate. Mm. So better to keep quiet. So that's my position. But of course, very very sad, sad thing. One soon after that happened, one BBC reporter asked me what's my view. Then I express or oh, say. Really, very, very sad. Individual's life is very, very precious. So, sad, so, uh, killing. Very, very sad. Uh, oh. Then, then, I, 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 I think it's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes? Okay. And then, uh, uh, then I express oh, such dramatic sort of action, whether really effective or not, I doubt. Mm -hmm. I express publicly to BBC correspondent. Then soon after that, I was in Japan, again using this question, race. Then I told, uh, this is symptom uh, due to some causes. So now, in order to tackle these things, you must deal the causes of these symptoms. So now time come, Chinese officials should carry thorough investigation. Uh, what is the causes? Why is these people so much sorrow, or so they depressed, so much mean despair? despair. So Chinese government, they do not, I mean, do not allow the foreign correspondent in this area. But I think one or two, they went, they tried to, uh, they try through their sort of, uh, sort of effort. Blurry. Then eventually some area they reach. Uh, so that's very very important. You see. Uh, uh, find out. What's the real causes? That's my, my view. I publicly express that.
Yes? No thank, question? Thank you, Your Honourable. Yes, there are more questions. If you might, I'd like to put yes. the floor to Mr. Omzicht, Christian Democratic Party. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Your Holiness, for uh, a clear exposure. No. A clear exposure of what your views on solving the crisis in Tibet. I have a somewhat more personal question. You've been driven out of Tibet when you were still a very young man, about 60 years ago. What gives you all the energy of keeping combating for a free Tibet? And when do you think you will achieve um, uh, the freedom for your people which you were looking for? Ah. I always uh, describe myself as a free spokesman for Tibetan people. I'm not a ruler. Uh, I always telling Tibetan people, six million Tibetan people inside Tibet is our boss. So future of Tibet depends on them. It is our duty. Act according to their wish. So Tibetan determination, Tibetan spirit inside Tibet never weakened. weakened. Generation change. Some cases, the younger generation's Tibetan spirit is stronger than elder people. So we, as a sort of people who say, do on behalf of these people, it is so long, their spirit remain high. We also, you see, have to remain that way. Uh, I think it's, if there is a, no a Tibetan problem, there are only a handful of Tibetans problem. And I think now, after 55 years, I think we more or less quite well settled. Uh, those is a few, I think few thousand, rather few thousand Tibetans in the European continent, in Belgium, in Holland, in Switzerland, they, more or less quite well settled. <laughs> no longer have much worry. <laughs> but we are acting on behalf of these people. So they still face difficulties or problems. So always sending message to us. Uh, so, so we have to you see, think about their uh, right like that. And then as far as our sort of middle way for approach, not seeking independence, Number of Tibetan intellectuals, insight, verbally, written way, uh, express their full support. They feel middle way approach is the realistic, best way, like that. So therefore, we uh, actually we carry uh, their wish. So that's the main reason. Then I think, as I've already mentioned, I think things are changing. I think overall, no matter how sort of powerful people from China, still part of the world, world trend, more open, openness, more, free, more freedom. So that's a world trend. So, this, so China. Uh, have to go along that trend, cannot go the uh, wrong way. So, uh, and uh, then also I mentioned the Chinese people, among Chinese people, there are, you see, as I say, voice or desire for open society, these things down there. So basically, uh, we are uh, optimist, uh, full of optimism. Then how soon is this some uh, mutually equilibrium solution find that nobody knows? I think Chinese top leaders also do not know <laughs> how long it will remain. <laughs> this difficult is so difficult, difficult to do, definite. I think overall, it's the last uh, now, I think over 60 years, you see much change, much change. Yes, <coughs> next question. Next question. <laughs> Thank you, Your Holiness. There are more members who would love to ask you questions. Mr. Bosma, Party for Freedom, and then Mr. Schutzman. Thank you. Thank you for being here. 
I understand you did a speech uh, last Saturday in uh, Rotterdam in which you clearly uh, outlined the dangers of Sharia law. Um, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on your views on Sharia. What's that? Sharia law. Oh, Sharia law, uh, that's, you see, I think, you see, in different tradition, different sort of, what's the practice or different sort of, of concept. That is more or less private business. So Sharia law is the business of the Muslim. <laughs> the yesterday, uh, my talk, uh, my explanation about Buddhism, then one question, one questioner, one lady uh, ex uh, uh, expressed to me, you see, my present, among my presentation or explanation, Buddhism, uh, one of the religion which have no concept of creator, and she feel very, uh, how's that? Uncomfortable. Uh, she prefer the creator, that concept is something very helpful. And then I told, yes, uh, people who have different tradition, it is much better to keep your own traditional sort of religious faith. So changing uh, sometimes create more confusion. So then I told her, uh, for you, uh, it is much better to keep the concept of creator. So concept of creator is your business. Uh, that lady, I, I told your business. And no creator, concept of no creator, that's my business, no problem. <laughs> so Sharia also, I think, <laughs> I think uh, the non-Muslim criticize that. I don't know, difficult. But within Muslim, I met with some Muslims, uh, very very genuine Muslim practitioner. At the same time, quite sort of, quite sort of the, have some reservation about some of their sort of the, uh, uh, practice or thinking. So, uh, I think even within Buddhism, I think some certain sort of rule or certain practice, uh, sometimes I think necessary to modify. So like these things, as you can. Uh, uh, recently, I think, I think one year ago, I met some group of, from Muslim uh, country, group of Muslim come. And among them, one teacher, female teacher. So in that, uh, I think the Kaza, they mean uh, EU, Kaza. United, United Arab Republic, or Emirate or Emirate. You see, they come, uh, and also some, I think Jordan or some, I think Abu Dhabi or something. No, one group, one group. So among them, one lady as a teacher. Fantastic. Oh, in Afghanistan or some other places, you see some sort of difficulties. So therefore, I told them, you see, you have the responsibility. You have sort of, you can do more as a Muslim. And then should carry, should have some sort of uh, meeting, uh, uh, discuss about uh, women's right. We, from outsider, you see, saying something is not good. So within Muslim community, those more kasoda, uh, more kasoda, liberal thinking, uh, should sort of, should initiate more talk yeah, yeah. like that. So that's my view. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Highness. I give the floor to Mr. Schutzma, Democratic Party. Thank you, Your Holiness. A short question. You've met almost all important leaders of the world. You've met President Obama, Prime Minister Cameron. Uh, but unfortunately, you did not meet our Prime Minister, Mr. Mr. Rutte. I, would, I was wondering how you feel about this, but also what would you have told our Prime Minister if you would have met him? Oh, if I met, 
These topics I will, I will tell. Nothing special. <laughs> 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 if I want to uh, seek some sort of also the help or uh, more immigrants, uh, Tibetan, uh, yes. Tibetan immigrants, Tibetan immigrants yeah. right. then if I have some sort of particular sort of agenda, request. then of course, the request. Uh, I have nothing. So, mm. so in Norway, uh, no one from government side is met. No problem. My main purpose is meeting public because the promotion of human value, promotion of religious harmony mainly depend on public, not government leaders or even parliament member. I think not much. You, 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 do not, you cannot do much. <laughs> oh, oh. So, so real sort of initiative, real change must start from public individuals, families, oh, 10 family, 100 family, 1,000 family. Then it makes differences. So initiative must start from individual person. So my main interest is talking with the public not leaders. If, uh, one time, I think, in Netherlands, I also used to met to say, the Queen Mother. Yes. Oh, wonderful lady. <laughs> uh, really. Mm. And, and I think her, I think her husband, the Prince Bernard or something, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. I met in their palace, like that. So, uh, to me, Whenever I meet some important person, firstly, I look human level. So the person show real human love, human affection, like that mother, or queen mother, really showing that. So I love that. Some leaders, when you met, they are not acting like a human being, <laughs> but, but something, something a little bit different. Then I, I find it very difficult, even one second or difficult, then as soon as finishing that meeting, <laughs> much better. Uh, a person who really showing human being sort of thing, as truly, like President Bush, I love him. <laughs> oh, really? From first meeting, immediately, you see, we develop close of human feeling. Some of his policy is concerned, I have some reservation. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, by I think third or fourth meeting him, and I also used to told, I love you, I respect you, but uh, if may I say so, some of your policy is concerned, I have some reservation. <laughs> he laughing, laughing, laughing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Holiness. We still have a few minutes to go, if I heard. Oh, yes. So I'm really, yes. I think no members problem. are really happy with that. Still, I, would, I would like I to think 15 minutes. I'd like to give minutes. the floor There's to no uh, problem. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much uh, for taking time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Claver from the Green Left and afterwards to Mrs. Awan from the Party for the Animals. Mr. Claver, please. Thank you, Your Holiness. Um, sometimes I think it's more difficult to be a parent than a politician, so I have a personal question for you. My son now is six months old, and what are the most important values I should teach him? Kaza. Kaza. His father is six months old now. Oh. Six years. Six oh. months. Six, six months. months. Six months. Six months. Six baby. months. Oh. Yeah. He has a baby. And then he just what became are, father. <laughs> what, are, what are the basic values that you would like to have him in store? Family values. I'm a monk. <laughs> no experience. <laughs> no experience, you see, nurturing a uh, child. I think you should, you should, I think, you should ask some experienced parents or grand grandparents. <laughs> then I think they will they will tell you. But one congratulation, your new new child. Uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Next question. This was about thank nurture you. and thank nature. you. Very simple question. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> no? Thank you, thank you very much. We will go to the last question. We'll go to the last question, Mrs. Auerhans. 
part for the MS, please. Thank you so much. I would like to express uh, our thankfulness. Last time you were here, uh, you told us that if you were a Dutch citizen, you would vote for our party, the Party for Animal Rights, because it is so important to show compassion to all life uh, in the case for humanity and human rights. Um, so I, I would like to thank you for that. And my question is a rather short one. How are you? <laughs> mm. Now getting older, some problem, <laughs> some problem, my knees. Yeah. Otherwise, you say, okay, no problem, no problem. Uh, I appreciate your sort of, because of the expression of my sort of, I mean, appreciation of it. Uh, human love, these things. Uh, so I appreciate. And I think a young father, young father, I think now uh, you have sort of one, because of the, uh, good opportunity, uh, nurturing uh, that uh, child. And in this moment, I think some scientists, medical scientists, they say physical touch, uh, mainly mother, very, very important for proper development or enlargement of their brain. So you should spend more so, more time with your child, and then eventually, you see, go to school. You see, you should you see, spend more time uh, with your child, and then beside the education in school, you should sort of teach some kind of you should, I mean, teach or share the importance of love, affection. That's important. As a human being, I can say, uh, my, my own case, my mother, extremely sort of warm-hearted sort of mother, illiterate, uh, poor family, but really sort of tremendous sort of, sort of the, uh, affection. Not only her own ch child, children, but some sort of, uh, one occasion, this is some famine, famine in, in, in neighbor sort of area. So number of uh, Chinese as they come to our village, uh, they're nearly starving. So my mother, when she uh, telling uh, the story, uh, she weeps. And she told me, she told us, uh, one, one, one day some, well, some sort of cover parent and carry dead body of their child. And then my mother told, <coughs> oh, I will, I will have you uh, bury, properly bury your child. Then they say, no, we are going to eat. So they are facing starvation. Then my mother cry, 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 and the whole sort of uh, I said mother, uh, the whole odd things which in 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 my mother's sort of her house, bread or these things all give that person. Then please don't eat your own dead child's body. So. The first teacher, I always say, first teacher of compassion is my mother, not religious leader. So you all have as the uh, opportunity to teach your children more, more. Teach this is not through word, but through action, affection, sincere affection. That's the proper way to get deeper experience of, because of that, uh, love. Then such people who received maximum affection early part of life, then they can easily show love and affection to others. Okay. 
So that's my advice. <laughs> Your Holiness, this was about tender love and care, TLC. Your Holiness, um, I would like to thank you for your inspiring words and your message of hope that left no one untouched this morning here. Once again, thank you for your visit to our parliament. Thank you. Thank you so much. And may I invite you to take personal leave of the members of the committee now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. There. Yeah. Members of the members of the parliament. Yeah.